Hey wizards and medical creatures, Fallon here. Today, welcome back to badge farming number uh, seven. So this time, we will be working on a... Um, we are going to work on the Samaru badge. And then um, the pig's badge. We're going to do the pig's batch first. Since it's really not that far off. So let's go to Mushu and do some badge farming today. So this is badge farming number seven. I plan on doing more uh, as well. Just doing like older badges as well. Just to get those done and over with. That it, Now you actually do get rewards with the badges which is nice. So, um, my, I don't know if, like, the mic is picking up on this or not, but I have my fans on because where I live, we literally are living an entire week of a, of a, um, really not great heat wave warning. So all, all of our windows are closed and all of our fans are on, but we're also trying to use, like, way less electricity right now as the heat wave that we have can cause brownings. So I was just kind of like, okay, we'll turn it down then, I guess. And then all that. So they're on low, but I just, I don't know. I never know with the mic. Hopefully the mic sounds a lot better because I got some mic cover-ups from Amazon for like $4. Hopefully that sounds much better. And maybe it's more close to my mouth than to my nose. I think that might have been the problem. So, I am going to talk about a bunch of other things that I always do because I am playing Hogwarts Legacy. And I don't know about you, but I really love Hogwarts Legacy. There are definitely, like, a lot... But there's definitely, like, like, a lot of wrong with the game. But this is the, the company that made it. It's their first game. So hopefully, just maybe that they'll maybe they'll do more updates to improve upon the game. But I'm actually really enjoying it so far. Uh, today, I discovered a place called Marum. I I can't really say it. Don't try to give me the same things I can't say. Um, I had to basically go through a random. Rand Rock Loyalist base to get there because for whatever reason I couldn't just fly there. So I had to get to a Rand Rock Loyalist base to go through there because I actually have to do one of my main quests in that area anyway. And then I have to do a, a, a beat rescuing a beast quest even even farther area that's around there. But I went around like Hogwarts and Hogsmeade and all that and like went to go find all the flu flames. Well, some of the other places you can't um, get to by flying broom or mount, you have to literally do it by foot and call it a day. But I am a level 29, almost 30. So I'm very proud of that. I have most of my stealth. I have all my stealth spell spells, like, all max maxed out with my talent points. I'm just waiting to hit 30 to get more talent points and as well and I believe I'm almost done with the Sebastian quests and everything I'm not gonna give spoilers into what but I think I'm almost done I'm making a lot of progress there I'm also making a lot of progress here too except for like some uh, main quest stuff that I keep having trouble with because it's like three versus one so, I I tried to get some help a couple of times, and it's not been working out. So, I've just been, like, on the other Fallon doing that. Um, I will be filming for the other Fallon as well. Uh, I'm probably going to get a team up for the Overseer. And then come and film, because the Overseer is fire. And having a fire boss like that is just a pain. So, like I said, some things that I do off-camera... Are just for the reason of I don't want to keep you guys, you know, away for so long. Is because of that. So I am just trying to sit here and um, 
get that done. I think we're going to also do some badge farming as well over there for other Fallon as well. I'm just trying to th uh, think of like things to do here since I did switch to my channel being a Wizard 101 only content channel. So I'm just like in the process of figuring out like more ways I can add. Um, I should I could probably film a um, another Wizard 101 basic. What was I doing? There was something I was doing. Oh sheesh, I forgot. All right, shit. Back to the piggies. Back to the piggies at large. So I'm just really in the process of like figuring out what to do because I basically this would be next Monday's video. I could probably film another helpful Fallon tomorrow because what I usually do is that um, the more videos I get down the more I start to film more so Monday, Tuesday, so I'm down to two videos so I can film one today and film a couple tomorrow or just film one tomorrow. It really just depends. I usually do that more towards Thursday and Friday as I usually have more time on those days but I have to do something on Thursday and I'm babysitting on Friday. And I really rather not spend my whole weekend doing that as much as I dedicated the entire weekend um, to uh, filming. I you so because I don't want to necessarily do that this weekend, I have sat here and I film kind of like during the week if I can, as long as nothing is too crazy. So there's that. Oh, I, I forgot to put my... Uh, thing back on. As you can see, I'm not KFC Fallon Chicken. And that's because my stats are much better with this gear set than the other ones. So we're just going to do that. I'm keeping the wand though, because I really do like the wand. And, ha and the wand honestly has really good stats too. So I'm not really worried about the wand. I just, I've been forgetting to put it back on. <sighs> so I'm thinking that if we do not get the Mushu badges done all in one go today, I am thinking that we can just continue to do Mushu until everything is like completely done. And I think the next we'll do like Next, we'll do Marleybone. I think I have all my Celestia stuff. I will have to check that once we're done here. I, but I think if I did, if if I'm not done with Celestia, I think I have to do the sharks, and that's all I need to do. Then that's all I need to do. I do think I'm done with Dragon Spire as well. I know with Wizard City, I'm not done yet because I need to do um, the golems. I also need to do the 4,000 undead, ba undead badge, badge as well. Um, there's a bunch of undead all over the place. But I'm just going to get, like, Mushu done at least. Because that was a 101 one. The Wizard City one, especially for the um, undead. That is going to take some time. So I'm thinking we can just get, like, shorter badges done and call it a day, even... And, and stuff like that. Sorry, guys. I'm still a little nervous about being a mic. Oh, yeah. I totally forgot to say. I have my tattoo consultation in a couple of weeks here. Well, by the time I start posting these videos, it will literally be... The next weekend that I do. So I'm going in to get the scars on my arms checked out. Um, I had some bug bites from like 10 plus years ago. And I also have a little bit of some arm freckles on my arms. So I'm trying to make sure that while I'm planning out this floral sleeve that everything is going to be fine and... 
it's possible for me to get the foil sleeve done on my left arm because I want it all on my left arm. Um, I was going to do a blackout sleeve, but then the little freckles on your arms, if you have those, they can possibly get cancerous. So, um, usually with those types of freckles, you work your way around the freckles. So I'm going to see what my tattoo artist says about it. Because actually the funny part about getting that consultation is that I was... The shop that I want to go to, I wanted to get tattoos by all three of the artists that are there. I wanted to get the owners. I wanted to get a tattoo from the owner. Uh, the tattoo artist I'm going to, he's the employer. And I want to eventually get one from her apprentice. I will not be naming names as as this is public and I don't want to dox people. But yeah. So it actually works out perfectly anyway. They just, they all three have the floral style tattoos that I'm looking for. And honestly, hopefully, you know, obviously this is what we're going in to discuss. Um, I would like a really, like, line art type of florals. I'm not looking for, like, anything ridiculous or anything detailed because, quite frankly, I can't really afford anything detailed anyway. Um, but it, it's just going to be, like, just simple line work with some simple shading. And hopefully it will all turn out. At first, I wasn't going to get colored tattoos. Because I was like, I have to, I will have to color coordinate with every single one of my outfits. And I don't want to do that shit. Well, my mom and I had this conversation. My mom has like four tattoos. But, you know, we still had that conversation. Her friend, her friend has um, colored tattoos. And she just wears all, all shades of rainbow on her clothing. So then that changed my mind, which is fine. I still would have probably done the blackout sleeve if I did not have these freckles. And I, I don't like have these freckles all over my body per se, but they're more prominent on my arms. So I just want to make sure that I am literally okay and safe to tattoo on. Especially with like my scars and my little freckles. I'm not really worried about the little freckles because you can work around those. I just worry about my scar because I know that sometimes, like, depending on the scar and where it came from, um, one, it can either be really painful or two, it it's going to be really hard to tattoo because the skin may not even take the ink. So I just really want to make sure that I am doing this correctly. And mind you, I've been planning my first tattoo for literally years because if I had gotten my tattoos from say like 18 to 23 I I literally probably would have ended up with so 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 many um, cover ups and that's not and that's not my goal for my tattoos that's not my goal for my tattoos what I, what I have my goal for my tattoos is that I want to have tattoos that I will never want to cover up and that will permanently stay with me forever. So it's just, it's just thank goodness that in 2024 I decided to do my first tattoo first. Because I just, like I said, I, besides the fact that I can't afford a cover up, that's the entire point of me getting tattooed is to not have a bunch of cover ups. So I'm very nervous and very excited at the same time because. I always have, like, this goal for myself to be a super heavily tatted woman, as that's just how I've always saw myself as super heavily tatted with a little bit of piercing, with a little bit of piercings and everything. So, I, I just hope it doesn't keep me from getting tattooed, which I don't think it won't. I also have, um... Uh, I can't even say that. I'm just going to say the definition for it. 
I have chicken skin, but um, it's nothing terrible. Uh, my both my mom and my dad have chicken skin. Um, both of their chicken skins on them have gone away. Uh, mine particularly has at all yet, so I was just like, oh my god, I got chicken skin. And I actually looked it up and it said actually chicken skin is just a surface level problem, so it's fine. Which is good. And I'm also just trying to like keep track of things. of Because I don't, I really don't have any skin conditions. Per se. I don't have any skin conditions at all. I really just want to make sure that I tell my tattoo artist everything down from every detail and let him know and like ask questions because I'm definitely going to be asking about like how he feels about people leaving Sanaderm on for the entire duration of their healing because I want to do that because I babysit my niece three to three to four days a week um she not like a gross child per se but she's, you know, she's still a kid. And I just want to make sure that it doesn't get infected, etc., etc. So, I'm thinking that I might just leave on my Sanoderm for the entire time. As I don't want this to easily go bad. But it just, and then... Like, money-wise, it just depends on how much my tattoo artist thinks my tattoo is going to be. I'm either going to get it done this year or get it done in, like, March, February, April. It really just depends. I am saving up money for this. I'm doing really good right now, and I'm keeping on track. I'm really just trying to figure out, like, you know... It, it's really just... A, there's a lot of variations, but I'm going to make sure that this all goes really well and then the one thing too is like my arms they get hair and I'm probably gonna have to shave my arms a lot and I always thought about like getting an electric razor for women for like arm hair and leg hair because that's real so I thought about just doing all of that to keep that um, shaved as well so, like I said, I'm really just uh, planning this out. Oh, yeah. So, on my Winx Club uh, glass art project, we are now on Season 7, and we have um, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 pieces of the uh, season seven pieces in together because I'm doing the winks and then their fairy animal on the side as well. So we are almost done with that. Uh, nerdy girl, bur uh, nerdy girl, bo boss art is um, getting all caught up with that. So we have all that done. Um, I, I'm not sure when I'm gonna start the actual fish food project. I really want to get the wings project done first, and it's really amazing that it's getting as done as this is. I started this, like, a few months ago, and we're already on, like, season 7. And that's quite amazingly fast. So, after we get through Butter Butterflix and Tiny Eggs... We are going to be doing the World of Winx, which is Dreamix and Onirix, and then we will do Season 8. We will do Season 8, and then after Season 8, we will be doing a bunch of side characters from every single show. I mean, every single episode, down to the parents, down to, you know, the kingdoms that eat the each girls are from. Down to villains, um, down to extra, you know, creature friends like the Pixies, um, the Guardians of Cyrenix, the Silkies, etc. Et it will be a really long project, but it's coming along very super well, and I'm really proud of it, and I'm really just happy to have all of that. So that will be done in 
probably a few years, honestly. But I could be honestly over-exaggerating on that one. But who knows? Oh, another thing I meant to say during the other recordings was that um, my house, my Marleybone house and my other Fallon, I cleared it out of the furniture because I didn't like the direction it was going in. I, I kept it basically to Wizard 101 and Marleybone themed and I don't didn't like it that much. So I completely sold all the furniture, emptied the house, and I will take you guys literally along with me while I decorate the Marleybone house. Once I can get 900 crowns, uh, I can continue. I will then show you the rest of decorating the the Red Barn farmhouse on this Fallon as well. But on the other one, I'm going to take you guys with me to decorate it. And we're going to start with the inside of the castle first. And then move on from there. And actually, now that I think about it... Um, Marleybone has a greenhouse. Uh, the At least the royal estate that I have on my other um, character. Um... There's a greenhouse, so actually I might just practice gardening from there, but I'll have to think about it and see if I change my mind. Because right now the greenhouse is honestly just full of my other pets that I have on my other Fallon as well. So I'm really just going to give it some thought. If not, then we'll just do the one little patch in the back of the red barn fire and call it a day. And we'll just see from there. And I think I might actually, like, change the color of, um, my robe on the, uh... Oh, we just need one more. Cool. Um, color the robes on other Fallon again. I like it because it looks like Pikachu. But I don't know. I just want something different. That's how I usually am. I just change my mind and I just do it anyway. So... We'll just see from there. Um, I may even change the robe color again on this one. Because what I had before was that she was... I think this Fallon was um, orange and red. And then the other one was red and yellow. And honestly, I kind of missed that. Alright. Oh my god, we gotta defeat 400 pigs. Okay, so we're at 250. Uh, let's go do some Samramu, which is at um, Village of Sorrow. So we will just go this way, because that's where Village of Sorrow is. So, yeah, I think I might just change the colors again, or I actually might just want to do the color scheme that I was going to do with my Poseidon set, which was Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, Dark Magician Girls, uh, Dark Magician Girl colors. Well, at least just a couple of them, so I will see from there. We're going to change them out, because... I want to. Uh, yeah, let's go for the pony. There we go. It all, it all just depends. Um, another thing that I've also been thinking about too is like starting a tarot reading channel. Not right off, like right now, but just in general. Right now, I'm just kind of thinking of names. And I'm not going to reveal the names as I want to keep those to myself. Right now, until I, like, figure it out. Because this isn't, like, a totally set and stone thing just yet. Plus, I'm still learning tarot, which is actually going really well. Um, after I record this video, I actually plan on doing a uh, tarot reading anyway. Ooh, excuse me. But that is going really well. But not everything is set in stone with that just yet. And actually, since now going on to this channel, sorry. 
I don't want to, you know, keep you at two places at once. Ever since switching to just Wizard 101 content, I've actually felt a lot more happier, to be honest. And, like, not because that I was unhappy with doing other games. It just... I'm just really passionate about Wizards and this game. So I think it, it was just the perfect opportunity to sit here and... You know, switch to an all uh, Wizard 101 gaming content channel. Which, again, no regrets. No regrets with making my art channel um, just shorts. Because on my last art channel, before I rebranded that into the Nerdy Girl Boss art, uh, my shorts did a thousand times better than my videos. So when I rebranded and started the channel again, I just decided that I was going to just do short time lapse, time lapses on shorts only. That's actually doing really well, even though it is going really slow. It's still doing really well. And, you know, every everything doing really well, even if it's slow. That in itself is already a victory at hand. So I'm really happy with where I'm going and where I'm heading. Because on the Fallen Fire form, just the channel now, we're at 23. And then my art channel is at 6. And even though everything is slowly burning, which I'm glad that it is slowly burning. Because let's be honest, going viral is terrible. For, especially if you're like a beginner because I just feel like you know you're you're going viral for one thing but then you want to pursue other topics that you're truly passionate about but you went viral for that one basic thing and everyone's gonna put you in that category when you really you know shouldn't have you know, when when going viral, it just it feels like not the greatest thing in the earth. And sometimes, some people have success of not um, switching t of switching topics from the one they originally did. But I think like a slow burner victory is a slow burner uh, way of doing YouTube would honestly be much more. Uh, healthier, to be honest. Now, what I do YouTube as a full-time career, honestly... Uh, yes and no. If you wanted to do YouTube as a career, I'm not gonna stop somebody, but if you do YouTube as a career, do not quit your full-time job or your daytime job. Keep YouTube as a hobby and a side thing. If you are like me, someone who has financial assistance and you can, you know, do all this YouTube stuff without worrying about, like, needing to clothe and feed yourself and have a home, then yeah, go for it. But if you already have a daytime job, you know, keep it. Don't do YouTube fully 100% just because you can lose your YouTube career within seconds. Your reputation can get screwed within seconds. So if you are somebody that does work, keep your job and do this as a hus as a second side hustle. And if you're somebody like me who lives on financial assistance and everything and has the privileges to not worry about, you know, rent, food, bills and things like that in that manner. Yeah, go for it 100%. But honestly, I I wouldn't do it unless you got some real good privileges that you will never have to worry about, like rent or food. Otherwise, I actually genuinely do love being a YouTuber. I like the thumbnail making. I love the filming. I love everything about it. But I just would not 100% bank on YouTube depending on where you are in your situation in life. 
And oh, and Mark Cuban even said when starting a business, keep your damn day job. You're gonna need it. So, like I said, I'm just very, very privileged to get to have this aspect. And I take care... I, I take advantage, not take care of. I take every advantage I have of everything that I have, especially. So, I'm not gonna waste time on it. I do actually throw a lot of energies into my channels. I throw a lot of energy into everything that I do. So, you know, I'm honestly very set. Alright, 110 Samaru already. Let's keep going! Ah. Oh my god, this heat wave has been, like, awful. It's so hot. Like, right now, we're, hit, we're going between, like, 92 to 105. And at that point, if I wanted to live in 90 to 105 weather... I might as well, like, move to Florida or fucking Arizona, because I hate, hate, um, I hate hot weather, but I also don't like super cold. My favorite time of the year is fall, because it's got that good in-between, because I also live in an area where, um, it gets super fucking cold. Like, I remember being, like, in high school one time... And walking to school in like minus four degrees. And I always walked to school because my my dad would make me late constantly. And that annoys me to this day still that I don't like being late. So at that point, I'd rather just walk. But I was still really bundled up. But I just remember walking and like my high school was not that far from my house. So uh, my house at the, at the, at the current time. So I didn't really care. But I just remember being like, I hate this shit. Why is it minus four? If I wanted it to be minus four, I would go live in damn damn it, I would go live with the penguins in Antarctica. Why? And I always just I always hated winter. Because I would to come like in extra layers and it would all just be all over the place and yeah, hated it. But then I also hated hot weather. But at least the school the school was at least air conditioned. <laughs> so that wasn't that bad. But yeah, we get the air conditioning running. I literally have two fans running in my room. I have my ceiling fan and then um, my fan on the ground. And we're not using as much electricity. The lights are off where we have one TV on for my dog. Because it's kind of storming here and there, and she gets really anxious with rain and storms. So I, I turned on the TV for her and called it a day. So we're, we're not using as much electricity at all whatsoever to keep, you know, browning outs from happening. Uh, well, and we can't... <laughs> I was just going to say, we don't really, use, we're not really trying to use our microwave. We can't really use our microwave anyway because my microwave literally popped <laughs> and now it's dead. So we're going to go get like a little microwave and call it a day. Because you got to, mine was attached to above the stove. So we would have to find the correct cord for that. And that's a whole pain, and then you need a special tool for that, so my mom's like, yeah, I'm not gonna do all that, I'm just gonna buy a little microwave that you have to plug into the wall and call it a day, which honestly, I can't blame her, because who wants to do all that? Not me, not her, not really anybody else, so... <sighs> Ooh. So yeah, that's what's going on with my life. I'm sorry if I'm saying um a lot. I'm still trying to get used to this, not to mention I'm just trying to think of things to say and to think of as I want to try to be semi-entertaining as much as possible, even if it's just like semi, while finishing up these badges. 
And because, like, I not I don't live a boring life. It's a life without so much drama, at least anymore, because things have chilled out and things are calming down. But like, um, all of my, um, all of my um, mental illnesses are under control. I'm still in therapy, and I've been taking my medication for years. But I'm still in therapy to have somebody to talk to, which has been super helpful. And my life is just so much more at peace when I'm so used to like so much chaos. So having my life be this quiet and peaceful is genuinely the greatest feeling ever, but at the same time, it's kind of like really weird to me because I'm just so used to everything being so chaotic and stressful. So when it's like not chaotic and stressful, it's like, oh, this is weird. I don't know what to do with this. So that's why I don't have a lot to talk about. But even if that was going on, I have no plans. I'm bringing it on my... Uh, personal life drama onto YouTube because this is not that you know this is not what the, this is for and not to mention not everything you know needs to be told on the internet and I have this guilty pleasure that uh call uh called watching locales locales are basically just um off the handle people Really shitty people who are on the internet being assholes. But if you just look up locale, it will explain a lot more better than me. But I do follow channels that do cover, like, locales. So, it's, that's one of my guilty pleasures. So, I watch a lot of that. And they put a lot of their life on the internet, so... You know, I'm trying to, like, prevent myself from being that person. Not to mention, actually, when I was a teenager, especially on, like, my Facebook. And thankfully, my Facebook was just a lot of friends and family. But my best friend was, like, at the time, was like, Stop putting everything on the internet, you dumbass. And then I did that. And, you know, just, this isn't, you know, this isn't that. But I am just... Talking, 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 talking. Hell, yeah, Lord. Like I said, not to mention that I get super nervous because I'm also not like a very social person. I'm somebody who's very introverted and I also, I literally just stay home all the time. I don't get out much. Like, I will go out with family like once in a while. I'm not like against it. It's more just like... I, I'm just not very social, and I really prefer to stay inside and, like, be in my little cave of solitude. But, haha. <laughs> like, like, my little cave of solitude. That was the baddest haha -ha ever. Please do not listen to the haha. -ha. That was awful. <laughs> but, yeah. I really just prefer to stay inside as people in the world are scary right now. And also, people just do not know how to drive or act like human beings. And everyone's gun happy, and the world is just really on fire right now. So, I will happily just be shut inside my room and ordering my stuff. Like, go online shopping on Amazon and just order my stuff from there. Instead of having going out to the world. Mind you, I don't drive, but still. People don't... So there's some people here that do not deserve to have licenses and genuinely need to have them taken away. But, like, it's just like, ah, no. The world's on fire, and I think I'd rather just be in the safe zone, which is my home and my bedroom. Plus, as, like, somebody who has um, two learning disabilities, I... Have a cognitive impairment with ASD, autism spectrum disorder, and I just, I really just appreciate being alone because I just get very easily overstimulated, and it it's just a lot for me to socialize. So, I really do just like staying inside, playing my games, filming, you know, doing my tarot card decks, doing my craft. 
and everything like that in my own space as doing that for me makes me feel really zen it really does help me recharge so I am totally, like, not upset at being a total, like, quote-unquote shut-in. I don't consider myself, like, I don't consider myself, like, a shut-in. I have waved at people and at my neighbors, and I've said hello to people walking by and everything. But I just consider myself more like a house hermit because the world's on fire. People don't know how to drive. People are gun-happy. Um, people are just shooting up shit left and right. So I think it's so it's just much safer to be your own damn house at this point, with the with what the world is going on. Okay, let's get to 150, and or well, look, let's see. Well, we're almost to 130. Like we are not that far from 130. Uh, you know what? Let's get to at least like. 139 if not then we'll just do just the 130 whatever 130 stays in today and that's all i'm thinking um then for the next video i'm probably gonna film another playthrough but i'm probably going to um uh do the uh Overseer's quest off camera just to get help with that and then come on camera and do the rest. It really just depends. Um, oh yeah, so I was going to do one of the side dungeons on my other one. Uh, she's got the lower zigzag and the tower of elephant left to do. So, I was thinking that if I can actually genuinely get some good help with the lower zigzag and um, the Tower of Hellophant. Because the Tower of Hellophant, holy shit, the Tower of Hellophant is, oh my god, so much. It is a really difficult tower, let me tell you. So, um... I don't know how long in filming that would take. Just because the Tower of Elephant literally has layers. And yeah, it's just kind of hard. It's going to be the same thing with Lower Zigzag. Because there's like other areas. But I think the Lower Zigzag may be easier to record than let's say... Um, something like... Uh, the Tower of Elephant. I do have Castle Dark... Mo Dark mode or dark more here for a quest as well, but I'm not sure how long that is. And I can very rarely get help on it, but I do want to show you guys that. I will just have to get over myself one day and literally just do it. But it just really depends. I'm just thinking about that too, because I'm thinking that could be like a second or third video to go and do that. Or like, or just, or do both. Do both on one, and then do another on one and call it a day. Yeah, I'm just trying to plan out crap here. <laughs> so that I can at least just figure out what I want to do. Oh, 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 oh. Excuse me, I'm so sorry for my rudeness. I'm just a little tired. Um... My medication that I take for, like, my depression and my anxiety doesn't really do well with heat. And usually, because I do not do particularly well with heat, I normally get very tired. So, I'm not bored. I am just very tired from the heat. But at least it... But at least we have air conditioning is all I'm going to say. I'm very grateful to have our air conditioning at least. And I'm very grateful that we also have ceiling fans. And we also have like other fans as well. To uh. Keep us cool. And I also did wash a lot of shorts for me to have. So there's that. So. 
It just depends. Um, if I do film Tower of Elephant, you probably won't see the whole thing. It really just depends on how long it takes. So you might see, like, partial parts of it, but if you do play this game, you already did Tower of Elephant, then you'll know what Tower of Elephant is already a thousand percent alike. Um, it'll be the same thing with the lower zigzag and probably Castle Darkmoor. I can't say it. Please just correct me in the comments because I, I can't say that shit to save my life. So, um, but if I do end up getting for Castle T, uh, ca the castle stuff, then I will definitely, um, film it and let you guys in on it, even if it's just slightly. That's okay. You know, that's better than nothing at all. And I'm just very lucky that I have a computer that can handle as much recording as I do and the amount and the time that I do record because um, my videos can go for like 15 to an hour, sometimes hour and a half. It really just depends. But most of the time I try to keep it to like 15 to an hour. So, and I and I have a feeling that tower the tower of elephant is probably way more than fifteen to an hour max. It really just well, it also really just depends on your team too. Because sometimes wizard one to one teams, especially in dungeons like that, they just get very toxic and very rude and sometimes a little vile. And unnecessarily, people are just randomly really mad at, like, what spells you play. So, I know that Castle Darkmoor can get toxic. I have a friend who also plays Wizard 101, and he did that a few months ago. And even he said that um, his team kind of was sucky via um, their attitudes and their toxicness. He is, for whatever reason... This game brings out the worst in people, which I don't know why. It just it just brings up the extra grumpiness, and it's like, this is a 16-year-old game that's been heavily modified to go to now modern-day graphics. This game came out in, like, 2009. Please, you're going to get toxic about anything in this game. Please, touch grass. Like, genuinely touch some fucking grass. Because, come on now. I never understood toxicness in games. Like, I miss the days when games were just... You know, people were having fun. No one took everything so seriously. But then again, that's just asking... That's just rose-tinted uh, glasses. At that point, or just wishful thinking. Let's see how much we have. Yeah, we're not that far from 140, so we'll get to 140, and then we will wrap up uh, the video. So, But I think um, Castle Darkmoor is the next uh, place that's going to be... Uh, the, the place that has the next best gear for, like, what is it, 110 and up? Because, like I said, the Waterworks gear lasts until 110, so I'm assuming that Darkmoor is the uh, next gear you get when you're, like, 110 in this game. I also really super love... Spoiler alerts ahead, sorry. Um, Malister doesn't die. He doesn't really come back till Chrysalis. But mind you, he's the ending boss for Dragon Spire. And somehow this motherfucker went from Dragon Spire level only having like 8,000 health to being a 20,000 health boss. So I'm just not so sure what like potion he took. To make himself so advanced, like, he skipped a bunch of other worlds somehow. And I'm just really curious into how he managed to skip 
that. <laughs> I just want to know, like, how he managed to get through all that. And I think that's, like, the funniest thing is, like, oh, Malister is back as a skeleton. Great. I thought he died in Dragonspire, and now the man has, you know, 20k health and m skipped a bunch of worlds on top of it. He was supposed to be dead as gone, and now he's here alive as shit. Like, what the fuck is this crap? <laughs> and then you, you're still- we're still dealing with Morganth- Morgana- or Mor I can't say her name. So, let's see how much we have now. Yep, 140. Alrighty, now that we have 140 Samurus beaten, uh, that's all the time I have for today, Wizards. Thank you so much for watching. I love you all. Don't forget to comment, like, uh, comment, like, subscribe. Subscribing is free. It's a little button down below. I love you all once again. Thank you for watching, and bye-bye!